Tenkan Poche is about 6,500 metres in the Khumbu region in Nepal. It's pretty easy to get to you. I think you walk for about three or four days. When you get into this valley, it looks a bit Scottish uh, in the autumn. There's like rolling hills and kind of these bushes turning brown and it's all very cloudy. And then the clouds clear and you see this amazing group of mountains around you. And very, very impressive lines, all these like, pillars rising up. And of course, there was this unclimbed feature, of which was the northeast pillar of Tenkenpoche. It's this amazing rocket, like a, a spire. And there's one real crack system that goes up the middle of the pillar, and that's the only thing that you can follow. This was my first trip to Nepal. I'd always been distracted by other places like Pakistan, India, I went with Matt Glenn, and he's a good friend and someone that I've climbed with a bunch uh, here in the Alps. Day one, we've done 10,000 meters, and we're at the fifth bivvy. Oh, only joking. Absolutely gassed. Second bivvy, nice and tired. Day two in the world. Our first attempt, we had amazing conditions on, on the wall. I started aid climbing up the lower head wall and um, unfortunately like my axe ripped and then I slumped onto a piece of gear and skidded down the wall some way and and slice my finger. And we decided that if we still had another four or five days worth of climbing, and it was a big open gross wound, it was probably better to go back down and get it uh, seen to by a doctor. We had about seven days um, down the valley trying to get my finger as healed as quickly as I could. Um, the weather was unfortunately really bad, so it snowed a ton and the mountains completely transformed. Where previously we'd been running up things that felt like the Edwell slabs in North Wales, in big boots, uh, dry rock and stuff like that. Instead, the, this time we had powder snow like up to our knees. Here's Tom, swimming away. Matt charging, day one. Just made it through the lowest mile and onto the highest mile. Woo, very snowy now. But quickly we got onto the steeper section of the wall and then conditions were okay. Um, there was still quite a lot of ice in the cracks and it was significantly colder, but we um, made better progress. We, I managed to A, climb the same pitch without falling off. It's very lucky that there are good snow terraces at relatively regular intervals up the mountain, so we could find good bivvies. There was one that was absolutely rubbish, and that's some way up the, the lower head wall, and we deliberately fixed our ropes um, to try and climb that section as quickly as we could and skip out what we knew was a bad bivvy, but then it was with a the sort of sinking feeling that we realized on the third day, we were gonna have to bivy on this terrible little alcove thing that uh, we know another team had used. It's sort of half the size of this table and you're just kind of slumping off in the middle of the night for a few hours. I didn't answer that. <laughs> it didn't work. <laughs> Oh God. How many stars would you give our bivy last night, Matt? <laughs> Maybe a third of a star? A third of a star. I didn't die. Didn't die. Yeah. Very bad. Oh, we really, really, really want that sun. Here it comes. Further up, we found much better bivies and we were able to recover quite a lot. 
which was really fortunate. I think if Tenkan Pocha had been any more sustained or any single snow terrace wasn't there, then it would be much more an aid climbing, big wall type of thing. Making it through the upper head wall slowly, slowly, slowly. Three pitches of hard aid. Off head wall. There is an incredible view. Here we have a penthouse bivy on a giant snow mushroom. Matt's just coming over to join. Ooh, ooh. Another long, 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 long day. 6,000 meters, just got 400 meters of snow ridge to go. Ooh, what do you think of the wind? I'm being a chicken and staying in the tent. What do you think about Bibi? Pretty spectacular. <laughs> we are at 6,200 meters. Yeah. We look like zombies. We have been crushed. We have been crushed and turned into dust. Day six. We're climbing like 100 meters a day. Yeah. Here we go. Towards the side. down the valley. Seven days on the go. It felt good to be at the top and it had put oh, up a real what a fight. fight. Yeah, what a fight. It was quite a strange uh, finish to the, the route, if you like. Five days or so after climbing, I then posted about it. A previous team, Quentin and Jesse, had attempted the northeast pillar of Tenkampoche in the spring of 2021, and they had uh, bailed, but they'd left a rucksack full of gear um, on the mountain. Really low, uh, it was the end of, first, of the first day, and on our second attempt, we decided to use some of the food and uh, some of the gear uh, that we had in base camp, but we just figured it was up there at the end of the first day, so we'd be lazy and take the, the food that was in their pack. When we got back down, I contacted Quentin straight away and told him everything. That there was a bit of an ensuing shitstorm. I think the main thing is that we, Matt and I, should have um, asked Quentin and Jesse if it was okay to use your, their stuff. And maybe we took the lazy option by uh, using it. But I think everything's fine now and hopefully we're all friends. We felt very satisfied with climbing Tenkenpoche and it was a really, really rewarding experience. 